the last days that the mountain of Yahuwah's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much for joining us here at Remnant House, the home of the strong and the very courageous. And mom and I, every week, we're delighted to join with you, to sit with you, to share with you, to connect with you, to pray with you, to yes. believe with you. Amen. To yes. shout, to praise, Amen. to worship, to glorify Woo! him with you. Amen. Yes, Everything we do, we do together. I just am thankful for every one of you that are here with us on the chat. If you're uh, new to the channel on, on Shabbat, if you catch our broadcast on YouTube, you can join in on the chat and, and chat with uh, other members and visitors and friends of the ministry that like to swing on by. And, and we're always grateful for every one of you that make that effort. And so uh, today we've got a lot to cover. I do want to talk to you quickly about the video I did yesterday that was released and it's a very important word concerning those whom Yahuwah has set apart. If you haven't listened to that, I really strongly encourage you to listen to it during the yes. Shabbat today yes. and it may provide some confirmations to those of you that have been really interceding and wondering what's going to be the deal here. What are you, what are you doing, Father? Um, the sad part for us is the numbers. Yes. Um, that's the sad part. It's the numbers and how small they are. I'm sure it was the same for Noah. Uh, I'm sure it was the same for Lot, the disappointment in the number of people that would not receive the salvation that was freely being given to them. I mean, an ark was provided to them. Yeah. All they had to do was get in, and they wouldn't. Angels came to deliver people out of Sodom and Gomorrah. All they had to do was follow them, and they wouldn't. And so a lot of times we, we see simple things that Yahuwah is trying to do, and people complicate it. And so saints, understand that this is a simple thing. He's calling captains of tens, captains of fifties, captains of hundreds, and captains even of thousands yeah. uh, who are set apart for this time period. And um, this is moving, and it's moving quickly. A lot of things are being confirmed, uh, almost dovetailing. You know, the, the sower is being overtaken by the reaper, and, and there's all kinds of things happening so quickly that we barely are getting one thing out before another thing is happening. And so the pace is going to continue to quicken. We've got to keep up. So we, you know, there are a lot of things that happen only, in, you know, you're going to have to connect in the spirit in order to stay in, in time because mm -hmm. there's not enough days in the week to watch all the right. video broadcasts that would have to be created just to keep you abreast yeah. of everything that's happening in the Holy Spirit. Right. And so, so very important yes. that you stay connect, connected in this hour and that you do not allow yourself to be distracted by the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches. And the lust of other things, which reminds me, let me just take another quick rabbit trail, Mama, because people tend to forget this. Every single word you get, every one, has to go through the Mark chapter 4 test. That is, there's no exceptions. When the sower sows the word, he describes the next thing that happens. Yeah. So even if that wasn't the devil's normal plan, now it is. Yep. Because the king just told him his only authorized pathway. You see that? So when the sower is sowing word, look out for these three things. The snatch, the attack, and the choke. Yep. These are three levels every word's got to get through. Yep. So the first thing is the snatch. You hear a word, maybe on a broadcast, somebody sitting right next to you does the sucking teeth thing. You know, that thing. Or, you know, rolls the eyes or goes, oh, I can't believe that. That word wasn't for them, but maybe it was for you. And what's happening, the enemy's trying to snatch it from everybody around them. Yep. Careful, okay? 
the word's not for you, just keep on eating what's for you. I mean, many times when I'm receiving something, I will stop on the word that's for me. I won't hear anything for the next 20 minutes because I'm still meditating on the thing that was for me. Right. I would encourage you all to just get what's for you. I mean, and so there's going to be a snatch, but even if, if that doesn't work, the next thing you're going to experience, Mark chapter 4, it's right there, written, step by step. This is what the devil's going to do. He's going to bring somebody to make fun of you, persecute you, laugh at you, or in some way get you to drop that word yep. willingly. Yep. Okay? You'll drop it because of embarrassment, because of ego, basically. Embarrassment. You know, just making you feel like you're ostracized, making you feel weird, making yeah. you feel like you're a weirdo because you're obeying the word and nobody else is. Yeah. That's kind of like the people that the whole company cheats the employer. And when you're the employee doing it the right way, you look like the bad guy. Yeah. You're actually not going to punch out until quitting time and everyone's mad at you because you're setting the wrong standard to their thinking. This is the world you live in. And so yeah. understand that, saints. And lastly, the third test that you just have to understand is going to be there. It's the cares of this world, yeah. the deceitfulness of riches, yeah. your money. And, you know, you get a word. How many know that the first fruits were talking to Cain? Cain was like trying to bring the first fruits and the first fruits were talking to him, talked him out of it. How many know that, you know what, that stuff will talk to you. That snake will try anything to stay alive. Yep. When you're taken into an altar to be crucified, to be put to death, uh, put on the altar, right? That thing doesn't want to die. It's going to try and talk you out of it. And saints, this is the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other yes. things. And people fall for this one all the time. They get a good word. They got past the snatch. They get past the persecutors. I mean, they get past the people making fun of them. Like, all right, you're making fun of me. That's all right. But then the cares of this world get them. Yeah. Cares of this world choke that word and it becometh unfruitful it's not as easy i'm not making fun of anybody because it's not easy to pass these tests yeah. especially the bigger the word is the more aggressive these three tests will come yes that's true the more aggressive this is going to be and so if it's a big word if he's bringing you a big word of breakthrough a big word of healing okay this is a big one a big word of healing some of you are waiting on a big word of healing you get your word of healing what's the enemy do come snatch it First, right, literally, like five seconds later, come to catch it. Come to snatch that thing. You have to be very careful to guard off all of those things. And so, saints, I'm just sharing that with you, a little rabbit trail. But I really believe that the adversary is working overtime right now to keep you from believing Yahuwah Elohim's word. Because the ones who believe his word will endure to the end and overcome. Right. The enemy knows that. Every single one yes. that gets past him is an indictment against him. Yep. Okay, so every one of you who get past him become his indictment. Right. Right? So your witness, your testimony on behalf of Yahusha, on behalf of Yahuwah Elohim, declaring him righteous, declaring all his good works, declaring what he did for you, that testimony is against the other side. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't yes. want any of you to have a testimony. He right. wants you to all fail. He wants every test to be a failure. So you just give up. And that way you are not testifying against him oh. in the day of his judgment. Yeah. What, what else would he need testimonies right. and witnesses for if there wasn't a trial? Right. Yeah. Right. Yahuwah Elohim was accused of unrighteousness. We are his witnesses of his righteousness. Of his goodness, on, of his mercy, preach of his it. love. Preach we are witnesses. It. We're ready to testify. Right. Put me on the stand. Right. I'm ready to give you my testimony. Right. I will tell you Come the on. truth of the things he has done for me. That's I right. will share with you from Woo. one end of earth to the other yes, the greatness of, the, of Yahuwah Elohim, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, Hallelujah. saints, today we're going to be talking about the mountains. Now, I know that a lot of people, when you hear a mountain, there's a lot of pictures that come to mind. In fact, if you hear people talking about the kingdom and then talk about going to a mountain, a lot of weird things might come to mind, right? Mm -hmm. But I got to tell you, saints, when you really, when we get through this, you're going to understand how important mountains are in the natural and what they represent and why they're so important in the kingdom, in the spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so let's get into this word. I believe it'll bless you. I believe it'll encourage you. And perhaps even give you some 
nuggets of, of direction and discernment for the season that's coming. And again, remember, we don't have the, uh, uh, the luxury, if you will, of, of being casual. This is a right. very serious time. Yeah. I, 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 the world is finally catching up to how serious the situation yeah. is. And, and it's starting to affect everything, the economy and, and everything is being affected. Work environment, shipping, every, every area, and it's going to affect everything. And the reason for it is because suddenly the earth is a little more serious. Suddenly people are more concerned than they ever were about personal hygiene, about sickness and disease, about pestilence. Something Messiah told us and we've been watching for years. But it's nice that everybody's waking up to it, so that's great even though it's a disease that was on the back of a Lysol can, so it ain't exactly new. Just saying. Right. Anyway, uh, so... <laughs> just saying. Can't be new if it's on the back of Lysol. Right. Just saying, okay? Right. Psalm 36, uh, we're going to go there and begin there. And as we do, I want to just encourage you to not think with your natural man. Remember that we're going to get into the Scripture. Now, one thing we know about the Holy Scripture is it's type and shadow. And so with the coming of Mashiach and the indwelling of the Ruach HaKodesh, we now can see the spirit of what he says, not just the letter of the law, which kills. Amen. So let's take a look. Psalm 36 and verse 5, it says, Thy mercy, Yahuwah, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Oh, hallelujah. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep. Yahuwah, thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O Elohim. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. Now I want you to take a quick note of that, that he compares his great righteousness to great mountains. It's meant to be a picture and when he talks about mountains, I'm going to go ahead and give this to you right away. This symbol means kingdoms, governments, and great authority. Mm -hmm. Then there are hills, which are less authority. Then there are islands, which are just above water level. And there are more people groups, not the same as a mountain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see the height determines just what he's dealing with. And you're going to see this correlate in various passages of Scripture as we go along. And then we're going to finish, guess where? On a mountain. On a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And so he says, thy righteousness is like the great mountains. And so his ways are not movable. They're, they're, they're not something you can go around and rearrange anytime you feel like it. And understand that this is important for us to get because many times... People try to play games with the concept of righteousness as if it's just a theory or an idea. Uh, you know, like it's just declared onto somebody. So you're just declared righteous. Like a liar being declared a truth teller even though he's still lying while his lips are moving. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. But right. that's exactly the kind of nonsense that gets yeah. preached out there. That's right. Is that you can stay a liar and be declared righteous. You can stay a fornicator and declared righteous. Yeah. You can stay an adulterer and declared righteous. <laughs> yeah, right. And and forget the word that says seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Just forget that because you're just going to get declared righteous. See how nonsensy that is? That's crazy. But that's the kind of doctrine that gets preached out there where they twist things to make it so that they don't have to make you do anything other than just come to their meeting and feel pretty good. But there, that was never the gospel. The, never, the gospel of the kingdom was not go you into all the world and hold meetings. That's not what he said. He said, go in all the world and make disciples. Now, that's a one-on-one -on -one intense relationship thing. And uh, Talmudim is somebody that follows you wherever you go. That's not an easy thing. So this concept of just sitting down like Greeks and just taking notes about what righteousness might be and deciding whether we feel like applying it or not is completely foreign to the example and the message that was demonstrated in the first century. It's got nothing to do with it. It's studying about it instead of walking in it. I'm going to say that one more time. It's studying about it instead of walking in it. It's ever learning but never walking in the truth. So you're, you're taking notes about another society, never actually entering the society. And so what he's calling for is for you to actually enter 
into that relationship, into that society, into the kingdom, right? So you're coming in as a disciple, you're walking with him. That is not something you're half in and half out. But that's the message you would get if you went to most of the places in America and the West. You would get the message that you're perfectly fine being half in and half out. That there's no requirement for you to actually be a disciple. All you have to do is just believe, believe in this sort of general sense that, that there's a God and that he loves you and that he doesn't want you to have sin in your life. No mention of repentance, no mention of, of bringing forth fruit meat for repentance, which all things Messiah taught, all that gets dumped for a message of nonsense that is not as established as the mountains. So this picture of the great mountains and his righteousness is the right picture. And it's one that you and I need to take away from this conversation so that we don't think of righteousness as something you can go around. Yeah. Mama and I were driving to see some land, and there was a mountain in our way. We did not go over or under that mountain. Yeah, we had to go think. around the mountain. Yeah, you don't know, move a mountain, okay? Around. And I've got faith to move mountains, but that's not what he meant. Yes. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, that, that is the case. However, you got to go around a mountain. That's righteousness. Righteousness is saying, look, this is the right way. You're going to have to walk in it. Yep. You that's try right. to go around this, trouble's coming for you. That's right. And so, you know, like marriage. Good example. There's a right way and a wrong way. Everybody that did it the wrong way will all preach to you about the right way. Every That's single right. one. Mm -hmm. Everyone with any conscience who did it the wrong way will turn around and tell you, don't do what I did. That's right. That was messed up. I messed up. That was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so understand there's a right way and a wrong way to do everything. And that's what righteousness is, is meant. And so when he says that he established that righteousness like the great mountains... He put that picture in there so that every time you see mountains, and they're all over the earth, no matter where you are, there's mountains probably within 50 or 100 miles of you somewhere, usually. Um, even if it's just a hill, okay, get the hint. He's saying, you can't move that. Don't try to move my ways. Learn to walk in my ways. Don't try to change them. Just learn to walk with them. Amen. Amen. And so don't try. Uh, that's not what he meant when he said move mountains. He was talking about your problems. He was talking about the issues of your life that you make into mountains. Amen. Because I mean, how many know that human beings have been doing that for 6,000 yes. years? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, they have. Yep. In Isaiah chapter 2, here's a beautiful word that we're going to see actually more than once. This prophetic utterance that comes by the Ruach HaKodesh that comes through more than one vessel. So it's, it's, double, it's more than one confirmation of the same thing. This is very powerful. So for me, this is a, a description and a word for this last season, for the last days. You cannot go around. Let's take a look at it. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Yehudah and Yerushalayim, Judah and Jerusalem, it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahuwah's house. Now I'm just going to sit here for just a second. The mountain of of Yahuwah's house, the mountain of his house. His house is a mountain. His house is a mountain. Just going to keep that on there for a moment. Shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, come ye, let us go up to the mountain of Yahuwah to the house of the Elohim of Yaakov, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, and for out of Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of Yahuwah from Yerushalayim. Right? So he, he tells them straight up that this is the future. This is the last day's word. This is what is coming. When it's all over, when everything is done, when we are tired of listening to the devil, when we are tired of listening to Antichrist spirits, when we're all done with this mess, he says in the last days, the mountain of Yahuwah's house, the mountain of Yahuwah's house shall be established above all the mountains. So he's saying, plain and simple, the kingdom of Yahuwah Elohim will be demonstrated to be superior to every other kingdom on earth. Every other government, every other form of government, every other form of authority, every hill, every mountain, everything here will bow 
before the mountain of Yahuwah's house. Somebody say amen and get excited amen. out there on the internet back there somewhere. Hallelujah. Somewhere out here, get, get excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you are being established in the house of Yahuwah, in the mountain, right? So you are, essentially, you are become the mountain or the city that he's making. The builder is using you as living stones, right? He said even the rocks would cry out. What would a mountain do? Come on, saints. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if the rocks would cry out, mountains would definitely speak. Amen. And they do speak. Uh, I don't have time to explain all that to you, but they do. Um, and so understand that what he is saying in this is he is talking about the coming of his kingdom and that all these other ideas and all these other things that tried to compete. This is why it's an easy call for me to say they're not going anywhere. They're going glub, glub, quick. Why? Because it's not me fighting them. I'm just watching. We're just eating spiritual popcorn, watching him whoop them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's just exposing them and making them look like utter fools. Attempting to cover their their deeds and their blanket. You know, he showed me something uh, with the Israeli election and he showed me, he said, this blanket will not cover them. He said they thought they had a blanket and it will not cover them. I don't even know what that means, but I suspect we're going to find out what I saw in the spirit was pulling a blanket to try to cover and it kept revealing their feet and it was not enough. So. We're about to find out what that means. Saints, mm -hmm. there's a lot of folks that think they could play it fast and loose and outsmart him. Uh, as if he is not watching the details of men's affairs. He sits in the heavens and laughs at the plans yes. of men. Psalm 2. Mm -hmm. So the, the thought that he's not paying attention is just laughable, literally. Right. <laughs> um, and yet so many people are not aware. And this is why it's so important for you, the remnant, to be starting to learn to look toward where do you want me? Where do you want to put me? Where's my place? Where do I belong? I've been talking to you about this for years now, for years. So nobody who's ever tuned into our broadcast has the excuse of saying, I don't know. Uh, I didn't know anything about that. You're not going to get away with it. He is, com he is making sure the notices go out to everybody that needs to hear. And those that have already rejected him, remember what he said. There's so many people falling for the Jewish trick. Okay, and let me just point it out to you like this. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. And only the wrath of Yahuwah Elohim abideth upon them. Now, how much of those under wrath do you want to hear? Yeah. How much teaching from those under wrath do you want to receive? Right. Come on. Now. Zero. Bridget. Bridget. Zero. They have not the Son. You should be all right. done. That's right. Right there. That's right. That should be a game breaker right. right there. You rejected my savior, my king. You spit on his name. We're all done. I can't even be friends with you. I can't even look at you. I'll pray for you that he just saves you. But that's it. Because you spit on my savior's name. We don't have a relationship. We are not friends. We are not supporting you. We're waiting for him to deal with you. And then when you repent, then, then, and only then. Because what you've committed is blasphemy. Amen. And they blaspheme his name all the time, saints. The worst of all. So I think it's really odd that so many people, especially people that are coming to Torah, are chasing the people that chase you away from Torah. Right. That chase you away from the holy things. Be careful with that. Be careful with their light that they'd like yep. to give you because you know where that light's coming from. Yep. All right. In Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 3, take a quick look at this because I believe that you're going to be surprised by some of what you learn. He says, I've commanded my sanctified ones. This means his saints, but it also means his angels. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. You see this? So he's speaking concerning these days, and he says, I'm going to set apart my people and my angelic hosts. The noise of the multitude in the mountains. Where? The mountains. The noise of a multitude in where? The mountains. mountains. Like as of a great people. See, he's not talking about the earthlings. He's not talking about the, uh, the carnal man. He's talking about his people. And where are they? In mountains. A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Yahuwah of hosts must the hosts of the battle. He's bringing a confrontation. He wants a confrontation. 
This is the Elijah confrontation at a level we've never seen before. This is the deliverance, that the, the uh, rebuke of Pharaoh uh, at a level that Egypt is going to make Egypt look small. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even Yahuwah, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Whew. To destroy the whole land. You see that? So he says, I'm going to put my people in a safe place, and then I want to destroy some things. Whoa. He's going to put his people in safe places and do business. And do some business with those who thought that they could terrorize the earth. And I want to tell you, saints, this is a scary word. Because the more I dig into this, you know, we, we, we see again from the New Testament, we see um, his grace, his mercy. But never does he say that because of that grace and mercy, there'll be no judgment on the nations. In fact, in the book of Revelation, we see him say in Revelation 18, 4, come on out of there. All of you, come here. Yep. I know you're trying to help them. Come on over here, honey. No, you too. Come on out of there. They're not listening. Come on out. And there's tears in the eyes of every one of those servants that he's calling back. Mm -hmm. And if you're one of those servants that he sent into a difficult place and you're now getting the word, it's time to go. This is not a happy, rejoicing, a joyful thing. Mm -hmm. That servant is heartbroken because you know what's coming. You know that as soon as you depart, Things will not be good. And it's happening worldwide. Earth, all over the earth. And saints, why is that? It's because the time has come. The judgment is falling. And it is not something that any one of us have control over. It is naturally falling like rain. And you need his redemption to keep from getting wet. It's the umbrella you need. If you don't have that, you're going to get soaked in wrath right. in this hour. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 41... Uh, he speaks to the redeemed. He's speaking to you and me, the remnant, those who are set apart, who will be seeing things through the centuries, through various times of judgment. So he put this word there for us, for no matter what time we read this, whether we read it a thousand years ago and there was trouble coming, or right at the very edge of, of time itself, made no difference because he intended to keep this promise no matter when you called right. upon it. And just, I want you to understand that because he makes it clear. He doesn't care when you call. It doesn't matter if you're even a thousand years early. You thought it was going to end today, but it's still a thousand years. He doesn't mind. He's still going to answer this word. Right. Look what he says. He says in Isaiah 41 and verse 14, fear not. So that takes care of what you should be doing. It's, it, it definitely shouldn't be being afraid. That's right. Fear not, thou worm Jacob and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith Yahuwah, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the one set apart. And that is why it is so important that we be holy, because he is holy. And he says, behold, so you will see it with your eyes. That's what behold means. I will make thee a new, sharp, threshing instrument. Wait a second. An old one? No. One they've ever seen before? No. Mm -hmm. Something they ain't never seen before. Brand new thing. It's going to do a new thing. Come on, saints. I will make thee a new, sharp, threshing instrument having teeth. Woo, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. Mm -hmm. So now you're wow. seeing what's happening. He's going to put some teeth in the prophetic words he's going to give his servants. He's going to send you out to declare against these governments, against these leaders, against these uh, mayors and governors and presidents and kings and, and all these in authority in various levels. And he's calling his servants to thrash the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. They cannot stand in front of you, saints. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away. <laughs> and the whirlwind shall scatter them. Now that you know what he's talking about, how afraid are you of the new world order? Look right. at this. And the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in Yahuwah, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. Oh, I love that. I just love that. You shall glory. Mm -hmm. And shalt glory. Oh, he's going to stand around and say, glory. No, no. <laughs> walk around just glory hallelujah <laughs> just happy just giving him glory why because he deserves the glory he destroyed your enemies this is over with already saints this is all just a, it's like watching a movie that we already know the end of it we, we know we don't know every twist and turn of the plot but we know how it finishes so it's a yawner right. 
Amen. It's a yawner. The devil thinks he's so exciting. He thinks sin is exciting. We are all bored with his sin. Come on, yeah. saints. Come on. Come Somebody on. back there. Yes. Help me now. Been bored with it. Been yes. bored with it a long time. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen anything new. Keeps recycling the same old morbid, psychopathic behavior. Like we're suddenly going to jump on this train. I'm, it just gets less interesting every cycle around the sun. <laughs> How many of you are already in heaven? You're just putting in your time on earth. You're just <laughs> waiting for the king to come. You had about Amen. enough of this devil's circus. Amen. Amen. Yes. And see, he thinks he's so clever. He thinks he'll keep enticing you. Come on, like it's like these politicians offering you free stuff and not telling you how they're going to pay for it. It's the same thing. <laughs> That's the same kind of crazy. No, it's going to be great. How are we going to do that? I don't know yet, but it's going to be great. <laughs> eat this tree. What's it do? Don't worry about it. Just eat it. He's trying to keep you from bed. He's trying, just go ahead and eat. <laughs> don't pray for it. Don't, don't worry about it. It's going to be great. It, and saints, we keep doing it. We keep, as human beings, as, as the human race, we bought these lies. We went over the ditch. We thought it was, we thought it was a, a, a restriction, and it was a guardrail keeping us right. alive. We yeah. thought it was trying to keep us from something, and it was. It was keeping us from death. In Isaiah right. chapter forty-two, uh, in in verse ten, he tells us that we are to sing. And so I want you all to start working your voices out on Shabbat. Hallelujah. You know, get that singing going because he tells you it's a command. It's in the Torah. You're supposed to sing. Get to singing. Look what it says. <laughs> Isaiah 42, 10. Sing unto Yahuwah a new song. Just go ahead and make one up. Amen. My son does it all the time. Yes, and his does. praise from the end of the earth. So you don't have an excuse. If you're on the earth, you're included. Look at somebody who's on earth and say, you're included. You're included. All right. Ye that go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof, let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kedad doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing, let them shout from the top of the mountains. So if you do get to the top of the mountains, you got to shout. Yes. Okay. Amen. He says, let them give glory unto Yahuwah and declare his praise in the islands. Now, that sounds like flowery poetic speech, but he's speaking again concerning various forms of government. So what he, the, I'll, de I'll decode this a little bit for you. So he says, let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. These are places outside of Israel. So these are places that are in faraway places like the United States you know, South America and so on. And he calls them the wilderness because what were they when he was writing this? Yeah. They were wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was middle of nowhere. <laughs> Every city you living in America was all in the middle of nowhere at the time he wrote that. Okay. Yeah, so it was okay. all wilderness. All right. And right. the wilderness and cities thereof. So now there's cities that have come up in these wildernesses. Now we've got a populated uh, North America. But at the time that he wrote that, it was the wilderness and he wants you to shout from the top of the mountains. What does that say? Think of Daniel. Daniel was in the kingdom of Babylon. That's a mountain. Yeah. But he was at the top of that mountain as third president of all, of all of Babylon. And he was a perfect example. We talked about that last week. Who stayed in that pocket. He did not leave his anointing. He didn't compromise. And they threatened his life. And it didn't matter because he was shouting from the top of his mountain. He was in his authority or in and under authority. So it's hard to move a man that's in and under authority. Amen. When a man's doing what he's called to do, when he's in a spot anointed for him to be, you can go ahead and put him in a lion's den. It's not going to matter. Amen. When he's called to do it, you can go ahead and sell him into slavery like they did Joseph, and it won't matter. He's still going to fulfill his destiny. Out of prison, he came out and fulfilled his destiny. Yes. The dream he had as a child, he still fulfilled even though they put him in prison. You see that? You can't stop that destiny. And those of you that are called to be captains, if it's your destiny to be a captain, you can run, you can hide, you can try, but you know the hound of heaven going to come get you. That's right. Okay? That's right. So I know some of you are going to have little scruff marks on the back of your neck when he grabbed you and yanked you. I understand. Because he had to do the same to me, you had to do the same to everybody. He has to get us where we're supposed to go. And so some of you are going to have a little scruff marks on you as he pulls you out of these ditches and pulls you out of these places. And you're going to argue halfway. You can, but you have all kinds of reasons why you were over there. <laughs> but he loves you enough to yank you out. 
And that's what he's doing right now. And he's okay. speaking to you. And some of you get in dreams and visions. You, you need to stop ignoring those dreams and visions. Yeah. <coughs> this will work for somebody. But uh, when you get dreams and visions, you should be writing these down. And even if you're not sharing them with anybody else, they are for you. You need to write these things down because he's giving you insight. And he's giving you understanding. And later on, it may make more sense. Some things won't make sense right now. But five years, two years, a year, six months, sometimes yeah. just a month. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you get a different perspective and go, yep. that's what that meant. Yep. So understand that he does that. He drops seed knowing that it will come up later. Mm -hmm. He's a farmer. He does that kind of stuff. So just because it's a seed today doesn't mean it won't be something you'll understand like a tree planted by the rivers of water later on. So some things you don't get full understanding on, but just take them by faith. Amen. And so some of you have some things that he's told you to do. Where you're not sure how you're going to do it. You're like me going to Jerusalem. Like, how am I supposed to pull this off? Where am I supposed to? You want me to go where? You want me to do what? Okay, I'm just getting on the plane. That I, that much I understand. Right. And I got off the plane. I understand that. Now what? Yeah. Uh, okay. I, it was his voice that got me that far. So his voice will take me the rest of the way. That's right. If his voice got you on the plane, his voice will get you off the plane. If his voice got you off the plane, the voice will get you to the hotel. Yep. The voice will get you to the right car. The voice will get you to where you need to go. Follow his voice. His right. sheep know his voice. That's right. Amen. And so that's how I ended up on the right spots. Beautiful spots. So he's trying to draw us into that relationship so that the mountains are not foreign to us. Amen. One of the things that's happened is we got so accustomed in the flesh living in these valleys, we forgot to go to the mountaintops. I'm going to talk to you about this here in a second. Isaiah 52 in verse 5, it says, Now therefore, what have I here, saith Yahuwah, that my people is taken away for naught? See this? That they rule over them, make them to howl, saith Yahuwah, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Uh-oh. Therefore, they shall know in the day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. See that? How beautiful upon the mountains, upon the what? Upon the mountains, upon the what? Upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, the mountain, Zion, thy Elohim reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when Yahuwah shall bring again Zion. What is going to happen is all of us who are scattered, and this is something that we've all lamented, is, is that's going to end at a certain point when we're all brought together. There's going to be a major exodus. We don't know all the details of it. All we know is it's prophesied. All we know is he promised. All we know is right now, Israel won't allow Aliyah except unless you are a certain type of Jew. Yep. Okay? And so that has to change. And we do believe it's going to. We believe he's going to shake and shake again so that all of his people can return. And that is going to be an amazing sight to behold. But notice that this passage, which is about the gospel, we hear this part of it all the time. Oh, how lovely are the feet of those who bring good news. And glad tidings of great joy, right? And the good news, right? So, you know, isn't that a wonderful picture? What's the verse before that said? They will know my name. Okay? Therefore, my people shall know my name. So, you can't do the next verse without this verse. Right. So, all those people out there went out there, didn't even know his name, didn't know him. How much work did they actually get accomplished, saints? This is why it's so important that we speak the truth in love. Amen and amen. And I don't think it's accidental that his name has been restored to us in these last days. It is a big deal that that has been uncovered uh, in this hour because he promised to publish his name throughout the earth. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 34, remember 33 is where we get the famous blood on the hands, better warn everybody passage of scripture. And so in Ezekiel 34, he is bringing a prophetic correction to the household of faith because we have according to the scripture right as a group we went astray we're all repenting now but we went astray and now here's what he's talking about he's talking about bringing us back to the right place and look what he says here 
In Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 12, it says, As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. So he says, I'm going to seek you out. I'm not going to leave you there. And I will deliver them out of the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. So the, the previous season, I, he scattered his people. He scattered all kinds of seed all over the earth. And now your DNA is talking. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. What's this now? Into their own land and feed them upon the what? Mountains. On the mountains of Israel, by the rivers, and in all the inhabited places of the country. So he likes to talk about these mountains. And again, he is saying his kingdom. And so we're going to live by faith. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. So where will your fold be? In the high mountains. And there shall lie in, good, in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. And so you will not be lacking power. And the mountain represents authority, right? So it's kingdom, it's power. And you will be the government. That's what he's talking about. He continues to allude to it. This is why Messiah came straight out and said it. Because he's actually telling you what Yahuwah has been saying all this time. If you could just grab it, he's going to make you a kingdom of kings, uh, kings and priests. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't mix it with faith. See, they didn't have the ability to take this message from the Torah and mix it with faith. This is why you don't want to follow all these people who do not have the indwelling of the Ruach HaKodesh. Because the only way you can process what he said is by faith. And they couldn't mix it with faith because faith is fruit of a spirit they don't have. Right, right. Faith is the fruit of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. If they don't get filled with the Holy Spirit, how can they possibly have the fruit thereof? Right. It's just it's logic. It's just simple, clear, not hard to argue with. Simplicity is why people need to get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. What happens when they get filled with the Holy Ghost? How much teaching do you have to do when somebody gets filled with the Holy Ghost? When somebody gets filled with the Holy Ghost, they call you up to tell you stuff yep, they learned. That's right. They get filled with the Holy Ghost. They went from baby to teacher in like 3.7 seconds. They're just like, wow, did you see this? And they call you up and they tell you about things they're reading and seeing and learning and wondering why you're not right with them. Because <laughs> right. the Holy Ghost got in there and started to teach. Mm -hmm. You don't need to help them. They already got the teacher. I mean, but you see, when you don't have that, then you have to rely on pounding it into your head or standing in a place, you know, reading your book. And repeating it to yourself because otherwise it isn't even going to be there and then the minute you get put under pressure if it's all carnal the carnal flesh will come right out you'll see them praying and scream at you in two seconds then go right back to their prayer book Pray. how's that the Holy Ghost right <laughs> but that's what you'll see from the carnal man trying to be religious trying desperately to find a way to get through even though their simple answer is Messiah. Right. Okay. Let me just tell you the, the measure of their resolve. They follow people who spent years in caves just to avoid accepting Messiah. Yeah. Looking for some other way. Yeah. So understand that these, <laughs> they're committed to going around. That's why I think it's astounding that people listen to anything they have to say. Um, and, and saints, we need to understand that you are being raised up by the Holy Spirit to be teachers. You will be the ones, you know how it says, let us go up into the mountain. You thought they were going to be running to the mountain and learn from those guys? Mm -mm. They're going to be running to the mountain and learn from you. That's right. They're going to be running to the mountain to learn how was it you were so blessed? Why were you so set apart? What was it about your, your house? What did he do with you that made you such an example? That's what people are going to come and want to learn. Let us learn his ways. Let us learn his statutes and his precepts. Okay? They don't have it in this ditch, and they don't have it in this ditch either. So don't overcorrect. That's all I'm saying. I was free for somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says that he's going to feed you in a good pasture. This, again, is not a, not a natural place. I mean, it can be. Obviously, he wants you to be in safe, beautiful places. Uh, he continues to say that. However... This is a spiritual thing. So even though you're maybe 5,000 miles away from us right now physically, it doesn't matter. We're still connected in the spirit. We still get to have fellowship with you. You're still hanging out with Mama and I. See that? Uh -huh. Even though you're in 
uh, South America or Africa or Asia. Doesn't matter where you are. We can connect. Now in Micah chapter 4, I told you he says it more than once. Here again, Micah is repeating the same prophetic utterance. Let's take a look at this. This is powerful. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of Yahuwah shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow into it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahuwah, and to the house of the Elohim of Yaakov, and he will teach us of his ways, and he will, we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth from Zion, and the word of Yahuwah from Jerusalem, And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke, what? Strong nations, afar off, smack them around. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. You know that the United Nations took a part of that verse and used it as if they were the ones that were going to bring that to pass? Yes. This is the arrogance of the unholy. Amen. The unholy. They are so arrogant. They actually believe they can usurp his word and bring it to pass. No, he's the only one that can bring this passage to pass. And so he says he's going to judge the nations among many people and rebuke the strong nations. So he's going to rebuke those that came up with these grandiose spiritual ideas who thought it's just our tradition. He's going to rebuke that. He rebuked Jews' traditions. He's definitely going to be rebuking pagan ones. Oh, Amen. Gosh, yeah. And so understand that any of these strong nations that come with all of their stuff, he's rebuking that. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's going to make mm -hmm. sure all nations understand that his ways and only his ways are what goes forward on his earth. Amen. So this again is foretelling of what's to come. So the direction we're going is cleaning this up, not making it worse. So everybody who's trying to bring in the previous season status quo, they're fighting a losing battle. They're pushing an escalator the wrong way. It's not going that way. never will. They're wasting their time. They're running up a down escalator. And they're never going to get to the top. They're never going to make it go backward. We're never going back to that dark again, saints. That day is over. All we got left is the wrath of the devil who's not getting the message, who's hard-headed and hard of hearing, and he's going to go out with a lot of wrath. So you're going to see him make a big old mess as he gets judged, as his judgment, as he says, as the king says, judgment starts falling on him all over the nations. He's running out of places to hide. Now we got your cameras. So you got cameras everywhere. Now we get to follow you around. <laughs> right. We get to see the devil crying in every country. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen, saints. That's what you're watching, and you're going to watch it unfold. And you may say, but what about all these diseases? What about all this pestilence? You were warned about that. These were signs of his coming. My son knows about that. Yeah. I've already, he's already learned about that. Why are these things happening? Because the king warned us that before his arrival, this is what we should be looking for. So should we be surprised by pestilence? No. We should have been prepared for that. We should that's be right. yawning, going, hmm, yeah, another right. one, another pestilence. And we're certainly not ones running around like chickens with our heads cut off going, coronavirus. Right. <laughs> Okay, that, that kind of behavior is just not befitting a son or a daughter of Yahuwah Elohim. Amen. And so this is why the mountain is so important because the mountain is your authority. Your authority is above their authority. Your power is above their power. This is why when you pray, you go past the kingdoms of earth. You go past their courts. You go past their government. You go past their authority. And you go to the supreme of supreme courts. And you make your petition there. And then it changes the world. Mm -hmm. Amen and amen. The, the amen. true power of prayer. And this is where his mountain is. It's above all the others. And so saints, understand that he is putting this in your mind, a remnant, so that you are unafraid because there are going to be a lot of scaredy cats out there. And your job is going to be to calm them down. Some of you have already had to do that here on the chat. You've already had to deal with people that you had to talk them off the ledge like, calm down. Hold on a minute. No, the world's not falling apart in today. <laughs> you know, your world might be, but it's, he's still on the throne, and we pray with you and minister to you. And what happens? We take them out of the mountain of the kingdom of the devil and bring them to the mountain of Akrite. We bring them to his holy mountain. What happens there? They start to learn about him, his kingdom, his righteousness, mm -hmm. his authority, how his authority is superior to their authority, how his ways are higher than their ways. 
how that if you learn his things, you're always going to have dominion over their right. things. Right? And so right. what's starting to happen, people start to figure out he was telling the truth. Right. Wow. And he starts to win the truth encounter. Truth.com, right? He's starting to win that. Because guess what? He's already in front of science. He's already in front of all these things. He has the cure for all these things. Even they're ever-changing and mutating. You can't get a... By the way, you can't get a vaccine for a mutating virus, by the way. It's impossible to get a vaccine for a mutating virus. Just saying. Better have something that kills all viruses. So, there's that. Um, and for the... I believe the curse is manifesting in the natural. I believe that these are all things that are just literally manifestations of the curse that has been rolling throughout the earth. There's been roll clouds. That was also a giant hint um, for sort of the dull of sight, you know, and... He's telling you, he's telling the earth, the curse is running to and from, and it will land upon those who refused. And that's why he's he, he just letting it, it's just going to play out. Mm -hmm. It's just going to, it's just like oxygen. Those that have a mask and breathe, those that don't will die. Kind of the same thing. You know, if you're in a non-oxygen environment, people with no mask, they die. People with a mask, they live. Cleans up real quick. This is what's happening here, saints. Those with salvation will endure. Those that don't, won't. Time to get saved. Yeah. Amen. In Amen. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 16, I'm coming in for a landing. Take a look at this. Then the 11 disciples, this is after Messiah has already risen from the dead. Judas has already blown it. Amen. He's already messed things up. But the 11 disciples went away into Galilee. Into where? Galilee. Where? Galilee. And what did they go into? What, after, what does it say after that? A mountain. A what? A mountain. One more time, Mama. A mountain. So not a valley. Nope. No not valley. The, not the sea. Nope. He didn't say, sea. let's go meet in somebody's house. No. Nope. Nope. He wants to meet where? Into a mountain. In a mountain. In a mountain. Where you, Yahusha had appointed them. You see yeah. that? I want you to notice this because you may not have noticed that before. Watch this. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Remember that? Mm -hmm. It was Thomas and he doubted. And Yahusha came and spake unto them saying... Now he's saying this where? On top of, of a mountain. Okay. And yes. Yahweh, <laughs> because if you don't see this part, you might not have noticed that. Right. And that's a big part. Because remember the Mount of Transfiguration. I don't have time to go through every mountain experience. I mean, Mount Moriah, of course, that's where uh, uh, Isaac was was given over. Uh, uh, we see, you know, on the seventh day, seventh month, seventh day, uh, the Noah came to rest on Ararat. Right. So mountains are constantly being talked about. But look at this. He is on a mountain and look what he says. All power in heaven or is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. So remember that the devil took him to a top of a mountain. Tell him he had the power over all the nations. Guess what? Guess what? Luke who's on a mountaintop now. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You see that? Teaching mm. them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of this world. So the devil took him up to a mountaintop, tried to get him to bow down, but he wouldn't. Why? Because he knows he owns the mountain. And he knew that he's king of the mountain. And he knew that if he just went Yahuwah's way, if he took upon himself the job Yahuwah had anointed him for, if he would just submit to the kingdom of Yahuwah Elohim, submit himself to the mountain that is set above all the other mountains, then he would be in a mountain with his disciples, giving them power, and all the devils would be running somebody Come say amen on. hallelujah amen. talk about hallelujah. a victory i know you want to go to your mountain now you want to Come get on. that word that says i've given you power to yes. tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the wicked one that nothing should by any means hurt you get up in your mountain son get up in your mountain yes. daughter somebody say amen, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah and he's saying i've given you power to tread on these things and he brought them up to that high place so they would look over they would be known, they would learn to oversee. They would learn to be overseers, not people caught up in the cares of this world, but learning to live above it all. Come on, saints. Amen. Oh, that's a good word. Mm, that is a good word. That is such a good word, and it's what we need in this hour, mm -hmm. and we see the spiritual application of it. But let me just tell you something. There's also some natural application as well, because... There are times coming that are so difficult. I honestly believe those that do take shelter in mountains are in better shape than those that take shelter 
in valleys. It just yeah. makes sense. So there's some logic to it when you really think about it. And you see Elijah who took shelter in the mountains. Many of the prophets, when they were hiding from Jezebel, where did they hide? Yeah. They were hidden in the hills, in the, in, the, in the mountains, right? It's hard to find them in there. So they were safer. Where did David hide? In the caves of Adullam, right? So being hidden in, in, in rock formations is kind of a, you know, kind of a tradition of our family. Right, right. <laughs> it's kind of a tradition of earth. So there may, in fact, be a time when we have to do that, right? And I don't know about you, but as for me and my house, we don't want to be confused in that day. Right. right. There's a lot of people out there that are waiting until the very last possible right. second. And then they're going to be like, I oh, I need yeah. some oil. Yeah. And okay, what else do I need? No pastor, no church, no fold, no connection, not yeah. nothing. But all they think they need is a little bit of oil. Right. See, saints, the deception level is phenomenal. He went through all this training for you to go, for, for, for the vast majority of people who call themselves believers to say, I don't need you guys, but thanks. He went through all of that and continues to train up those who will lay their lives down. And then the vast majority treat them as if they're unnecessary accessories. Yeah. How do you think the king feels about that? I know how I would feel. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say I can feel what he, I'm, I'm thinking what I feel is, is, is a small portion yeah. of the way he feels. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, I don't think I could feel as deep as he does. And so I can imagine his offense at that is pr probably pretty strong Right. because he said, how you treat my servants is how you treated me. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you take the dust off your feet on that town, woe to that town, which means I got your back. That's right. They mistreat you, let them know. Let them know I'm coming. So understand, saints, this is where we're this is where we are. And now, now he is making a thing about his name. He's making a big deal about it. Why? Because he's restoring his people. He's restoring Israel. This is not about churchianity, Rome, Christianity, or any of the the, the splintering that occurred. Okay, this is talking about the original message. The completion of the prophetic word that was given through the Holy Scriptures that now was completed in the coming of Messiah, that message, the way, that is what he's talking about. And so, saints, I just want to encourage you to, to drop everything that you didn't get from him, all the traditions of men, all the other things, and keep holding fast to his word because that's where you're going to be safe. Okay. That's his mountain. Amen. His word is above all other word. His authority above all other authority. His power above all other power. His mountain, the mountain of the house of Yahuwah, is established above all the other mountains. So, since all power in heaven and earth has been given to your king, now go. See right. that? Now you got something to go with. Amen. Now you got go power. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every one of my brethren. I pray that you would draw them into your holy mountain, not only in the spirit, but also in the natural, that they would no longer be in peril, that physically they would be moved to safe places. All of them that are in danger, you know what's coming. They do not. Uh, they can be in horrific danger right now and don't even know it. And so, Father, I just pray that you begin to stir those that need to move, those that need to sell things and get out of them, those that need to put their resources elsewhere, those that need to rearrange their lives. I pray you would direct all of that by your spirit. Let no man be directing it. Let no humans with ulterior motives get involved, but instead by your spirit, lead Amen. each one yes. of my brethren. Lead them wherever they need to go that they may finish well before you. I pray that you would cause them to be found faithful. And I pray that you would forgive their sin, any of them who have violated your ways, any of them who have spoken against your servants, any of them who have uh, done evil before you or have stolen or have lied or have done any wickedness. I pray you would forgive them, Father, and that you would accept their repentance today and that you would give them shalom in Mashiach's name. And the people said, 
Amen. amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Go ahead and give him a shout. Amen. Hallelujah. Now Thank I believe you, the, there's a word that Yahuwah has for uh, for those of you that are in ministry uh, and those that are called to ministry. Uh, you, you may have come out of some lies. You have come out of some deceptions and you have begun to seek him and are pursuing. And he is speaking to you saying, well done for having the courage to ask new questions. Even though you're not completely where you need to be, he wants you to know that he appreciates and loves you and is, is guiding you to where you need to be. So don't feel condemned. Don't let the devil make you turn back. Continue down the road. That's for That's somebody right. uh, that, that has, is right. taking bold steps and, and, and maybe you're getting persecution. Maybe there's some mouths that are raising up against you. Uh, to, to discourage you and Yahuwah wants you to know that he sees you and he wants you to keep moving that your blessing is at the end of that road that you're on just amen. keep going yes amen and amen somebody want, I read today uh, somebody said I threw in the towel and Yahuwah threw it back to me and said wipe your face you're almost there <laughs> I, like it. I, like it. <laughs> I tried to throw in the towel he threw it back and he says wipe your face and that's that's the attitude I feel from the Holy Spirit right now yeah. is come on Come on, you can do this. Right. Come on, yeah. believe. Just believe. You know he's telling you the truth. Come on, believe him. Yeah. You know, you're, some people are trying to get doctor confirmations for your healing. Doctors lie. Yes, they do. Doctors lie for money. Doctors lie for money all the time. Yes, they do. I mean, so you, you're all of you, they got hip to that. They got figured it out. Oh, they're coming to us for confirmations. Don't ever tell them they're healed. Okay, don't ever tell them they're healed. So you can't go by that. You have to go by his word. I mean, and you got to pick, he's going to call your body healed and you're going to start to feel it. Yeah. Don't let a doctor talk you out of it. Right. You're going to start to feel different. You're going to start to feel his healing. Some of you are going to stand up on your feet right now. Maybe your leg's been hurting you. And all of a sudden you're going to start to feel feeling in your leg again. And that flow is going to occur. Maybe you've had a back problem. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. <coughs> Some of you out there that have had aches and pains and things that have this been there and he's just going to heal them just to show you he loves you today as you rest. Yeah. I want to tell you saints, healing is easy for him. He loves to heal. Yes, he does. Healing is part of what he does. He can't hardly walk through a garden without touching anything broken. Yeah. He's going to fix it, heal it, bless it. That's what he does. So if you're not healed, get in his presence and ask for it and then receive it. He's not going to say no. There's no way he would say no any more than I would say no to you if you asked me for a glass of something to drink when you're sitting in my right. living room. Right. Well, there's no way I would say no to you. I'd go get you whatever I have. Healing is just one thing he's got on the shelf, and he can easily pour you a glass. Mm -hmm. Come on, saints. Go ahead and get a glass right. of that healing That's and just right. drink it down. That's just right. receive it in Mashiach's holy name. You don't need me to lay hands on you. You don't need anybody right now. Just by faith, he's going to touch you. Let his hands touch you right now. And if you're in a room with somebody, then they can play the proxy, but it's still going to be him. He wants to touch you. He wants to bless you. So you know it came straight from him. From him to you. Oh, hallelujah, that's free for somebody. Well, I'm so grateful for every one of you. If you're a captain, I want to hear from you. If you're called to support and activate what Yahuwah is calling us to do, we need to hear from you now. Um, we're not going to hound you. We're just going to ask you to step up. We'll know the ones that he called because they call. It's not that complicated. <laughs> Amen. And whether it's one or a hundred, we don't care. We just want the mission accomplished. Right. And we know that he'll do it with whatever number uh, he, he puts it in their heart to do it. And so thank you for those of you that are part of this house that continue to remain faithful. Those of you that are praying one for another. If there's ever a time you need to do that, now's the time. If you have a prayer request, if you are struggling and battling something, feel free to let us in the house know. Let your brothers and sisters know that you need prayer. It works. He hears. It doesn't mean that you'll get everything you want, but it does mean you'll get prayer. You'll get consideration. He will speak into your circumstances. And so that is a blessing. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been a blessed time. Amen. I pray that you all abide with us in the mountain of Yahuwah, established above all other mountains. May Yahuwah bless each 
and every one of you, and remember, Yahusha HaMashiach, He alone is King of Kings. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is a shield all around me, and I will fear no evil, for I know Oh